cool. So, yeah, I'm hoping this is productive. There's a lot of people here. Um, I think that the best way to do this is to, you know, there were some suggestions in the chat that like the best way to do this was to um, just kind of share what different teams are working on. I know Omar and his team, Omar's on his way from the Mantis team, the Composable Finance team. They've done a decent amount of work here on interoperability um, with IBC. Um, and then if there are other, like before um, he gets on, are there other teams here? Do you want to like just sort of self-select um, that you'd like to present some ideas? Uh, just want to say hi and like introduce yourself and we can kind of make a list and if we don't get get to you this time, we can, we can get to it um, on the next call. I think I saw some other people in the chat that <clears throat> had some things to share. Um, Just go back through my notes here. Uh, Karthik from Pepperdex, are you guys here? I don't. Maybe you're on the chat. Cool. Uh, looks like we got Omar here. Omar, are you in here? Yo, yo. What's up? Hey. Um, okay, so I know like from all the teams that I've seen, I think Composable Finance and the Mantis team have done some of the most at least public work on interoperability um, with IBC. I know Omid, your team at Iron is also uh, doing a decent amount of thinking around this, but with like permission environments in mind. Um, I think Probably the best way is like Kyle was just suggesting Kyle's the CTO of APK Labs. Like if uh, people just raise their hand, like, and they can kind of present what they're working on. Um, I think we can just because I know uh, the composable guys <clears throat> just announced like some at least open source research on this topic. I'd like to let them kind of just give a high level overview of what uh, what they're doing. And, um, and then maybe we can go to Omid just because I know that you guys have been thinking about this too. Um, and I think the goal here is that we just sort of like brain dump the challenges and the desired outcomes. And ideally, my ideal world is we end up eventually, probably after a few of these calls, um, coalescing around some focused solutions that we can all kind of contribute to. Um, I know that uh, the other team that has been thinking about this a lot is Turbine. Um, and I love the analogy of like an apples to apples solution. I think that makes a lot of sense to me, but again, I'm probably like the least technical person on this call. So I'm going to let the, the people with more like engineering backgrounds drive and just hopefully I can kind of facilitate a productive conversation. So, um, maybe, uh, Omar, do you want to kind of jump in and, and yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, so basically the stuff that we just, um, put out is like, you know, we've been thinking, we're building a, a roll up. So like actual settlement on Solana mainnet. So we've been thinking a lot about, you know, what types of proofs do you post to the L1? Um, are there like, is there a variety of considerations we need? Like, do we actually have to have this seven day window, et cetera, et cetera. So we then sort of decided to just go the like all in on the IBC work that we've had experience doing um, by, you know, bringing IBC to Solana. Um, and so we spent some time, um, A, architecting a bridge contract between L1 and L2 that allows for IBC connectivity. We're also open sourcing that. So like, you know, similar to a bridge contract you would see on Ethereum mainnets that links L1 to L2. Um, we have built a very similar thing and then also to go you know to have this bi-directional interop between l2 to l1 we thought it made the most sense to actually implement like what was what's what solana's lacking that we sort of built um to be able to enable solana ibc is like how we did solana ibc is we created this guest chain that actually produces state proofs for solana um, and is secured by a restaking layer. Uh, and that's because we can't add state proofs to Solana mainnet at all. And that's what was blocking 
you know, light client verification on both sides. And so obviously because we're, we're running a roll up and we have control over the validator set, at least in the beginning, we said, okay, actually we're going to tweak the validator client to add state proofs to allow for like full IBC between L2 and L1 uh, bi-directionally. And so that forum post we just posted sort of illustrates all the like math and the work we did to alter the validator client to add state proofs. Um, the Sovereign Labs folks also worked on this a little bit. I think we just like kind of con uh, continued the work and like pushed it to the finish line. It's going to be audited first week of September and then put in production sometime mid, mid September when we go live. Um, so yeah, for, so all in all, I think our interop solution is, you know, solved, solved through IBC and also our proofs problem as well. Right. So the natural next question is, okay, when you go from L2 to L1, do you still have to do this seven day window? Um, and in our case, because we're posting state proofs down to the L1 and the L1 is performing verification of everything that happened on the L2, we actually don't need this seven day uh, window um, similar to like what you see on Ethereum land. Uh, so how we're going to push this into an open source like framework is we're going to open source the bridge contract and this and the validator client so that other teams can be wired up um, with IBC from day one. This is also the case for SVM chains, like not necessarily rollups on Solana, but also just anyone that wants to do IBC between their SVM instance um, and the rest of the IBC landscape can uh, use this. So, so yeah, that's, I guess that's a long and short of it. So I, I think one, one thing that might be useful and anybody can jump in here, like just raise your hand or just start talking, but um, you know, can we maybe just like, from a first principle standpoint, break this down into like the various problems that need to be solved to create interoperability. Like I've seen uh, things like chain IDs to so the like backpack will just work on every chain um, is like a potential solution to the to the common problem of like we want apps to work on our chain, um, like the best in breed apps from Solana mainnet. Um, <clears throat> the other one is like liquidity and the able, ability to pass assets back and forth between chains um and as being a, a core problem but does anybody want to like kind of speak to like just list out what the core things are that are the problems to creating interoperability or the and, and then we can kind of like work backwards from that I mean, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, just like throw some initial ideas, like essentially with, okay. with, with interop, you sort of have two layers. You have like the, the actual sort of application slash transport layer where you have standards for, for like transfers In IBC, you have ICS 20, which is like the standard for basically lock and mint. Um, and then you have beneath this transport layer, the verification layer. Uh, and and in IBC land, that's light client verification on both sides. Other people like layer zero, for instance, just do like an Oracle and a relayer, like central, more centralized. Um, so, there, you know, a lot of different people have tried different things of like taking IBC standards and putting them on top of different verification standards, like not light client based. Um, there's also plenty of teams out there also doing like like client verification, but not necessarily the IBC standards for transport and and whatnot. So I think it's really just like to look at interop, it's it's really those two lenses. And uh for us, like we've we've kind of just rolled with the IBC standard because um that's that aligns with the rest of our stack, but also because like it is the simplest, most straightforward way, at least in our experience. Um for moving assets between different chains. And like, we've already seen quite a lot of rollups on Ethereum land looking to implement IBC natively. 
Um, I think the Polymer team is working on this and some other, t like, I don't actually know what they're going to ship, but, um, uh, but yeah, like, I think a lot of people want to be able to have this, this connectivity and try to like zero in on some sort of standard. And to me so far, like we've chosen IBC just simply because of the, the network effect and the security given by the light client, uh, verification layer. So, uh, just my two cents. Uh, Omen, maybe like, could you guys talk about this from the perspective of like permission environments, the stuff you guys are working on? And does that, does yeah. like the, some of these like problems and challenges add, add, line up with what you guys are facing? And it's kind of like a little bit different use case. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, definitely the, the challenges um, um, are, are very similar. Um, I'm, like just a quick introduction. Um, I'm the co-founder and CTO of uh, Iron and Iron Chain. And we are building um, an SP chain um, as a kind of like integration layer for um, for financial institutions that deal with fiat and crypto to kind of like make make these assets that uh, don't exist or or in institutions that don't take part in in, in public chains uh, to be able to um, uh, build applications and compose and transact uh, and empower um, various use cases, including payments. And of course, uh, liquidity is an important kind of like, you, you need to bring liquidity to be able to actually transact. And so we have been looking into how we can bring liquidity to Iron Chain. And I think it's best, of course, like if you build a technology, it would be great to kind of like build it for, uh, build something that's useful for all the SBE chains. So uh, we looked into um, the bridging um, problem initially, like if, if we could, um, somehow bring like transaction inclusion proofs like from the from the mainnet into um the the SPs like for to kind of like be able to prove that a certain asset has been locked. I think with Solana is like uh, I think it's difficult to kind of like create these proofs. Like initially the idea that we explored and I think it's not possible um was to um post um um, va validator like schedule like at the beginning of the epoch and be able to prove whether a transaction has been included in a block which is signed by a certain validator which like brings a lot of complexity um, in in actually kind of like simulating the the Solana consensus on the on, on the destination chain um, and then we looked into um, um, to to build a messaging protocol to be able to um, to reliably like move basically transport messages from mainnet to NSP and back. Um, and I think that's uh, the solutions. I think the, the guest chain concept, which I just like read about, um, also like goes down to, boils down to how we can uh, make sure that uh, a message is, is legit, actually like something actually like happened on, on, on a source chain um, and we looked into potentially building some sort of um, proof of stake decision making on like bidirectionally on both chains that whether certain events happens on the source chain and the destination chain um, secured by by potentially like restaking and, and assets that uh, already have value on 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 the on the mainnet. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's the kind of like the path that we're looking at. I mean, I IBC, we haven't looked into IBC kind of because I think it's 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 an interesting abstraction. We're not very like Cosmos. Um, it's it's not kind of like the technology stack that we've used, um, but I think that also deals with a similar kind of like a similar problem sets. So, so yeah, kind of like our focus has been so far in researching and building a design has been to, build a messaging protocol, like a, ideally a simple one that we could uh, transport messages and uh, like some sort of validators being able to vote on whether uh, a virtual block of um, bridge operations are in fact uh, coming from the source chain or not. Um, yeah, that's kind of like a very brief summary of, uh, of how we've been look, looked at, uh, at the problem. Max, yeah, uh, yeah, I have a quick question. So, uh, how would you compare 
to Excel our network or something like that? Would it be like a similar approach just to, to better understand? Like, are, are you asking me? Like, Excel yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think so. Yes, I mean, like uh, Axel, I believe that it's 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 a kind of like a messaging protocol that kind of like delivers messages to a, another chain. Yeah, I, I think I have a feel, like my my intuition about like the bridging problem is that if you have a reliable messaging protocol, then you can interpret the messages at the destination, produce on the source, and interpret on the destination. So yes, uh, I think kind of like the difficulty or or the challenge of using the existing protocols is that um they don't support like new spes and new chains and i think there's a good reason for that because um the new chains the security of the new chains are not known you know like if you want to bridge something back from a chain that has like five validators how do you know that's actually a secure chain and and the message is not fabricated and you know so i have a feeling that like the existing protocols might be reluctant to add chains that their security are not um proven i think that's a challenge for any kind of like uh, bi-directional bridging between mainnet and smaller chains let's say yeah and uh can, can you please uh i think you mentioned what's the challenging building like a light client for for solana or for svm can you can you please reiterate um I think I think the challenge is uh, the the part that I was uh, emphasizing on is um, given a, a block header, you cannot you cannot kind of like pro provide you cannot prove in a succinct manner whether a transaction has been included in a certain block, so that you can post this proof on uh, like in a destination chain and say, hey, I actually did lock this these funds on on the source. And you can issue new coins, new new tokens on the destination chain. So, uh, I mean, lights. If if you can't like verify transaction inclusion, then um, you can't verify that on on chain on the destination. Uh, I mean, not not all light clients can actually like run on chain. You know, I think in Solana, it's it's not possible to to have a light client, let alone verify on chain. Because I think that the issue stems from the fact that Solana blocks are not they don't accompany like some sort of a Merkle, uh, Merkle tree of transactions. Yeah. So you can, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so this is exactly why we, we, yeah. So, um, for mainnet, you, we built a light client by doing, by solving exactly the problem you're mentioning, which is like, we built this guest chain that was able to essentially compute these, these Merkle proofs necessary to then have a light, a light client directly on Solana chain. So that, so we've open sourced that guest chain architecture, um, like happy to drop it in the chat. This has been in production um, since April, where, and that's basically what allowed us to do IBC from um, Solana to Ethereum and Solana to Cosmos. And then, and exactly for that reason, um, that's why we modify the validator client for our L2 to add those missing components that don't exist on mainnet um, so that a light client is actually possible without needing some sort of guest chain architecture um, on the L2 itself. Um, so, so yeah, so I think that's, um, that's why we did the, that's why that was kind of the purpose, purpose of the, uh, the, the forum post we just posted is, is like, can we move to a world where Sure, Solana has these problems that don't allow for light client verification, but at least in the SVM chain landscape, like adding this in solves a lot of the interop problems. Yeah, so um, it's not too difficult to verify inclusion. Um, the only thing you would need to do is you need to get the block and then you, you need to verify both transactions to know that 67% of stake has kind of put it on it. And then you kind of check the account deltas and you uh, prepare a Merkle proof of that. And then you can just verify it on the destination chain, which, which is what uh, they do. Uh, we like client called tiny dancer. Okay, that's, that's interesting. I'll definitely 
Um, uh, could you kind of like send some link to this particular thing? I would love to know more about it. Yeah, um, I'm actually in the middle of writing documentation for it. Um, I'm happy to uh, check more in Telegram as well. Great, I think that's super useful. Um, Max, I'm curious to hear from you because you guys are building like something a little bit different here. You know, it's L2 on top of Bitcoin. Um, from a product perspective, like what are your needs for interoperability? What kinds of things are you guys hoping to get out of out of this? Yeah, we are we are building our own canonical bridge, and well, as and we were building uh, on chain light client for for Bitcoin. We have like basically built it. We'll soon be open sourcing that. Um, yeah, so we don't have a task like to build uh, on chain uh, SVM light client as well. It's impossible on on Bitcoin, obviously. Um, yeah, but uh, so our tasks, our major task is to organize um, like cross-chain communication with Bitcoin, and yeah, we are we are building this product ourselves. But yeah, I'd be more than happy to to explore the solutions that would help us to uh, to also have some connection with other SVM chains, uh, primarily Solana. Um, yeah, so this like uh, light client thing is very interesting, and we are also working on some uh, more like research phase right now with some uh, zk things and uh, building zk light client for for SVM. At least like from what other guys uh, mentioned, uh, uh, utilizing zk to uh, to build a light client for SVM sounds like a promising promising thing too for me at least at this stage. Yeah. What's the what's the need there from a product perspective for you guys? I'm sorry if that's a dumb question. Um, well, uh, I, I think well the, the major the major thing is bridging of assets. I think this is kind of use case number one for for any cross chain cross chain messaging. And uh, the next probably uh, thing would be something like um, atomic swaps, so like cross chain swaps. I think yeah, like bridging and cross chain swaps would be uh, on top of my list from broader perspective. Um, I, I can't be here for forever, but I, I do want to say that there's some questions about Tide Answer in the chat. Tide Answer is not a full light client. What you do is you run a program that uh, on that chain, like so on, on mainnet, that you can get a signature just for whatever uh, you know payload you put into that transaction. So you can get an assurance you know, and, and and signatures that uh, that that piece of state went through consensus, but it's not a full light like, client implementation. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, so I think the main thing that is missing is it's not included in consensus formally. Like in thing like Celestia, light clients are part of the P2P, and then they can query from validators. But then in Tiny you kind of need to hack by copying account data like account deltas into a separate account and then constructing a Merkle proof out of it. So it's much more hacky, but then the best way would be to include something like that in consensus wherein is part of the gossip protocol. Somebody raising hands. Yeah, go ahead, Gabriel. Hey, hey, Alexander. Nice, nice to see you and nice to see so many familiar faces in the chat. Um, I, I can share some of the work we've been doing at MeasureBlock and perhaps like, I think we have like a different approach and solution compared to many other, um, and, and I guess like compared to traditional rollups in EVM. And perhaps like it's helpful, I can share like where we are, what we are working on, where are the challenges. Um, just to give some context, uh, we started uh, with the use case in mind of food and chain games. So primarily there, what we are moving off chain is state. Uh, while I guess in many other use cases, you are trying to bridge tokens or assets. In our use case, uh, we mainly bridge or offload uh, state. And the way we do that, uh, um, or at least just taking one step back, 
uh, the way we design the solution is in a way that it doesn't uh, fragment the ecosystem or that's the target. So the idea is that you always start from uh, the state of main chain, you mirror it, you uh, perform some state transition and then you settle back. That's the overall idea. The way we do that currently, uh, we have a delegation program which lives uh, on Swana mainnet. Uh, you can interact with this program and delegate accounts so that you need to state that you delegate our accounts, so typically PDF of a program. Uh, after the delegation, they will be owned by the delegation program. Uh, after this step, we have instances of these ephemeral rollups that can load just in time uh, all the programs and all the uh, read-only accounts that are needed in the session. And we allow, we inject essentially the writable account that are delegated that we can update very quickly uh, in the rollup. So primarily, we were trying to achieve low latency, so we can uh, spin up this node. Uh, we optimize for uh, creating nodes on, on the edge. So a lot of work was in like simplifying uh, and removing consensus, gossip, and all the uh, components of the validator that are obviously needed on mainnet, but they are not when you execute. And then we have essentially a construction where the operator do an assertion and challenge uh um so the operator at some point will commit the state of a certain account and there's a fraud proof mechanism that um th there's a fraud proof mechanism that can challenge the state of that account i can go deeper now we we're designing that solution uh we currently have implemented the delegation execution settling back we're implementing the fraud proof mechanics but that's that's essentially how it works. So I guess the main difference is that we commit state diff. Uh, we don't do messages or we don't pass messages. You can obviously like wrap any message uh, in in any state. And and the other the other core things is that we are not tied to the slots of Solana. So we, you can commit multiple version of an account in the same slot uh, because the ephemeral can run with with a configurable time slot uh i guess that's that was helpful like in term of uh challenges we're also deeply investigating how the uh fraud proof mechanics can use light client to verify that the proposed state diff is indeed correct uh you can run a full node but that's very expensive so having the light client uh verifying the committed state diff which is committed on solana before finalization uh cool help uh, spin up a security committee with with a lot of these nodes, and uh, the other challenge is just to reduce and uh, anything that is not needed in the execution part, so that we can deploy on the edge this uh, this this validators. Um, in term of uh, just like milestone, where uh, we are releasing the containers of the nodes uh, in, in this day, so if like will be. You, you can try like what it does is that it clones just in time, whatever you need, you can execute and then settle back. And then we're also going to open source uh, all these projects. So we're interested to just collaborate or see if there's any touch point with any other projects. And happy to answer any question if, if there's any around the design. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate that. Um, Karthik, I know I've seen a bunch of chat here uh, with you and a few others and the, the messages here. Um, perhaps maybe you want to talk a little bit about, you know, if you're open to it, about SpiceNet and the technology stack you guys have built and kind of from a product perspective, the problems you're trying to solve and what your needs are. Yeah, for sure. So our uh, problem is just this, right? So we are uh roll up on last years but then we need solana liquidity such as usdc to be used as collateral on the exchange so and then we wanted to be you know trust minimized way right so we do we we build a solution called as artemis so it works like this right so when you want interoperability between two chains like say chain a and b b must know the state of a and a must know the state of b so here 
A and B are Solana and Celestia. So what we do is we run a Celestia light client. We create proofs of Celestia Merkle root commitments, and then that proof is verified on Solana. So now on, on the bridge contract on Solana. So now Solana knows the state of Celestia. And then for uh, SpiceNet to know the state of Solana, we use the light client built by Tiny Dancer, wherein we get the account Merkle proofs, we get the signatures of these 67 percent stake, and then we get the uh, the epoch stake stake proof, wherein we show that the stake has changed in this epoch. Then all of that is verified on SpiceNet. So now SpiceNet can verify any deposits or withdrawals from the two-way bridge that is there. And then for any deposit that is taking place on the bridge, once it verifies the proofs, it can natively mint assets from SpiceNet and vice versa when if anyone wants to withdraw from the bridge. Okay. Anybody have any questions about there? Or... Go ahead. Uh, so just following up on what Karthik said. Uh, so when you mentioned that you, uh, you're you communicating the, you have a light client of obviously Solana and then is there a message that is actually passing through or is there just multiple validators listening to both the light clients and just making sure that the state is same? I'm a bit lost there in the in the last part of uh, yeah. So like, there, there's no need to for 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 anyone to maintain consistency. So both the places kind of maintain records of deposits and withdrawals and asset and asset mints and burns. Now what happens is, for example, when the, the main point, the main initiation point is when deposit when someone deposits into the bridge. Now the proof of that is created and the signatures of of Solana validators are taken. And that is put on SpiceNet via the sequencer. SpiceNet is a ZK provable rollup. So our state transition function can basically verify this computation. Once that is done, it basically mints native assets. And then by attaching IDs and identifiers to each kind of asset mints and uh, deposit, we, we're kind of able to say that, hey, like th this deposit on Solana corresponds to this asset mint on SpiceNet and vice versa. Just going through the list here of who's on the call. Does anybody else have a project here with some needs or challenges they're hoping to work on with the community that you want to talk about? Just to share like what you're building and what, what the product is and the, the various challenges you're running into. Don't be shy. Go ahead. Uh, so I just uh, had, we, we just uh, starting out in this, I'll just give a brief about what we are trying to do. Uh, so we are, uh, we actually uh, aggregate a lot of uh, DEXs and bridges across our networks. We have like aggregated around 25 chains right now and we'll be doing Cosmos as well. Uh, the problem what's we realized your was project, that- it, What's your project name, sorry? Uh, uh, it's a block end. It's like okay. a block end to your back end and front end. Uh, and uh, so we we want to actually uh, enable uh, liquidity flow across chains. But the problem is, if we just aggregate existing external bridges, it's not scalable, even with the current messaging protocols, right? Uh, so we are creating a liquidity network wherein which will be built on SVM. So you could uh, the auction and everything happens on SVM, and then a user from any chain uh, can actually access liquidity across other chains. The problem we are facing is that if you if you use existing uh, messaging protocols they are limited in some sense. Plus, let's say even wormhole and all of these current protocols are not uh, either scalable or pretty slow due to the guardian network and all of it, right? So even if we, let's say, use IBC uh, for now, uh, the problem is, can you scale it to SVM to SVM communications good enough so that all future SVMs can have that much of uh, bandwidth? Plus, uh, I'm not sure if other uh, chains, it's not scalable as fast as possible to the other chains. 
are are we working on something which is specific to just svm communication i am not uh, like something which has existing like I, ibc or wormhole yeah so so the main issue with ibc is that you don't have asset asset fungibility so when i move my asset from one chain to another the change is basically means the synthetic of the main asset so on the destination chain you need to have liquidity so you need to have market makers you need to do the liquidity mining and stuff so we're not we're not talking we're not talking specifically from a, a solana roll up perspective um we have a solution called a saglier it was built by polygon the main benefit it allows is that it's it's kind of interesting is that you have asset fungibility so there is only one eat across the whole agler ecosystem so it's like the three roll ups like a b and c when you're bridging from a to b you don't get a synthetic of the eat on a but then you get the same eat that exists on a this is possible because it has a shared bridge on ethereum but then you can replicate this across ecosystems like the way we're doing with solana so what happens is that you only have one each and when you're bridging the accounts on the main bridge contract on ethereum are just modified a tad bit to reduce balance on a and increase on b so you kind of have asset fungibility and there is no uh, headache of managing with with synthetics So is is it? I'm not sure. I've not looked into Aglier much because they are not traditionally a proper. Uh, we've not thought of them as a messaging layer just for the sake of it because they're mostly focused on just settlements across things, right? But are they extensible to like Solana? And is it more? Uh, how do you actually integrate into Solana per se? Just the SEM ecosystem. Do you fork it or you do you use it, use it existing uh, as it yes, is? Yes. So we are forking it. To deploy it on Solana, so we we're creating like a shared bridge on Solana, and then that shared bridge, an instance of it is deployed across multiple chains, and then the benefit of here is that, for example, an SPA L1 that exists, it can also be integrated into Aglio, so it's not uh, kind of restricted to Solana rollups per se. So you can also have Cosmos L1, for example, you can have a SPA L1 and everything like that. That is enabled by by like. deploy an instance of the shared bridge to each chain so that they can natively mint assets perfect perfect i'll certainly look into that uh, one last follow up uh, is there if, when you are deploying the roll ups uh, like there are a couple of roll up as a service platforms coming up what are we thinking in terms of are we going coding from scratch going all the way or are we using these uh, platforms to actually start the base and then build on top of it what's the consensus there we are actually using something called a solving sdk so we don't use a ras per se because we don't use the svm virtual machine okay thanks thanks okay Yeah, I know Termina is uh I think built by the Nitro Labs guys if I remember correctly. Anybody here want to talk from that team want to talk about that? Let's go Rusty. Uh, hello. 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 Hey. I'm sorry. I'm a bit, a bit distracted. Uh, yep. So basically Termina is Termina is developing by Nitro Labs and uh, it's beginning I think so two weeks ago when our CEO Kenji had been participating in a weekly or daily SVM talks with you. he explained it as a cloud service but i think it's going to be presented as a long term vision but so far we're going to position it as a solana native for all up as a service model in order to have a dedicated block space for developers and allow them to build their own app specific chains because i think this kind of a approach would be most popular for app developers in order to focus fully for their particular application rather than jet creating a general purpose for a lot but uh, let's see how it will go at least it's my perception 
And and uh, how are you guys looking at interoperability from a product perspective, like SVM to SVM and SVM to mainnet? You know, roll up to roll up, roll up to mainnet. Um, what are what are some of the problems you're running into, and and some of your needs? Where do you need help? Um, we've been chatting with Carfic actually about this inter roll up communication, interaction communication, and I think this would be very, at least in ideal scenario, it will be great to have seamless interaction between different roles and app chains but uh, technically technical wise i have no idea how it could be done because i'm not a technical guy i just uh, trying to say that i want to imagine this kind of things to happen i'm not the best person to respond it understood um so i think you know we've it does, let me before i go to the next thing here it, who else is is there anybody else who'd like to just raise their hand and run through what they're building and their team and like the challenges from a product perspective what they need their needs are yeah, related to interoperability just like unmute and introduce yourself just a thought uh, since i realized that here most of the people are very technical heavy and maybe you can clarify me one thing that could be a stupid question, but worth to ask. So in my understanding, for example, in solutions like DevBridge, it operates like an escrow solution. So in order to have a transferring transferring assets between two chains, you have to provide it liquid. You have a dedicated person who has the same amount of liquidity or the same token on a different bridge. So it's like inter banking communication, for example. Is this gonna be is this solution could be suitable for inter rollup communication as well, for example? Yes, yeah, so the issue again there is you don't have asset fungibility that when you go from one chain to another, you just get a synthetic of it. So managing liquidity on that chain would be really tough. It's like a few goals that intra protocols which have to tackle is how do you ensure bridge safety? The second thing is how do you ensure low latency, which mm -hmm. DBS already offers. The third thing is how do you ensure asset fungibility? Because if the goal is to have like a million rollups, you can't afford to have millions of synthetics, right? It is this degrade UX. So you you also need to find a way to have asset fungibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Kartik. The other problem with DeBridge in terms of the low latency part is that uh, it's technically not due to the finality or something on the blockchain. It is just, uh, it is being detected on the source chain uh, and the solvers take a risk of finality and then they actually uh, deploy the assets of the destination chain, right? So that could work for an intent protocol or a solver mechanism, but uh, it's not ideal for messaging across uh, SEMs or even other chains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. There are no dumb questions. Go, uh, Joanna. Go ahead. Hey, I just want to quickly introduce myself. I'm at a SPC, so there's a lot of noise around me. So if you guys, um, apology for that. I feel that. Yeah, so I'm a co-founder of um, uh, just in the school of that, but I'm you know, going to make some announcements soon. I think the name is soon. That's around. Um, uh, our project is uh, building a layer uh, stack using application It's really hard to hear you, Joanna. Sorry. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's not good. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, just just type it up in the chat uh, later and and uh, introduce yourself. But I did tie. It's Soon Foundation is the company that she's the 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 group that she's the co-founder of. Really cool project um, that. Uh, it's kind of flying up, flying under the radar, but you're all going to hear about it more um, soon. Um, uh, no pun intended. Um, so yeah, we have like 10 minutes left here before the top of the hour, and I know everybody's busy. I guess like I just would like some feedback from the folks on this call, especially who've been contributing to the conversation on like, I think we've identified some problems here and some common challenges. Like what's the best way in your opinion for us to proceed here? I think like the goal is to work on shared solutions. I don't want to like, everybody needs interoperability. It seems like there are some shared problems and outcomes. Um, I don't, and, and there's lots of human resources and capital resources here. I'd hate to see it all wait, like wasted on, on competing solutions to like something that is really feels like a public good. Um, 
So like, how, how do we coordinate here? How do we get it, get everybody working together? And maybe just like, maybe the answer is like, you don't think we can, that's fine too. Um, but I would just like to hear anyone's thoughts on that goal. Is that the goal or is that just my personal vendetta <laughs> too? Could, could not be the goal. I think it's really great that kind of like uh, everyone who has an interest and interested in building interoperability is like here at the same time. I think like we, I personally got a lot of like great pointers to things that I'm going to follow up research. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it's definitely a public good. Uh, I, I see it this way. And um, I, I'm going to like learn and like follow up with uh, like people who talked today to kind of like uh, to learn more about the solutions. And I think we can follow up from there, you know, see kind of like a uh, um the progress in the next next course yeah hey, yeah in terms of collab um i think the main item is if folks working on the problem you don't want to be stopped and have to like do a bunch of talk and back and forth so the one thing i i promote is that if you want to work on this problem and you think it is a public good that at the minimum that work is open source and that's what really helps get a reference implementation um, cause what we're going to try and do is one person comes out, they put something else out, the community looks at it and sees what's good. They adopt that. And then it kind of pushes the next person to the, the next level, but we can't, can't get locked down and kind of needing to all be in agreement before we start building. Um, so the main item, like don't build closed. Um, and I, if we use that as our cornerstone, I think we'll be in a, a really good spot because if we do too much talking then we'll really go nowhere. So I want people to be empowered to solve the problems that they have the way that they see it. Um, but if you could do that in a spot where this interop um, portion of it is at least open source, maybe if you don't want to open source your whole entire stack. Um, and then what's going to come to you is that all of us, all these folks here trying to work on that problem, like we'll take that work and ideally give back with what their thoughts or get spark um, to inspire to do a different solution. Um, that is uh, better than the current one because we have a lot of space to go here. And um, honestly, on the SDM, we, we didn't really talk about, like, from the user perspective, what this should feel like, right? Uh, I think bridging and interop has always kind of been a pretty crummy user experience for folks, even from like Ethereum over and SVM. And um, then we're going to introduce a lot more chains. So uh, um, that's a spot. Like, I, I think we're thinking about like what could be done using this tech technology we have, but if we could think about of what's the most, what would be the enjoyable experience for someone submitting the interop, then working from there. And from my perspective, like I would think it would be that I, I want to submit one transaction and maybe that it's like it lands on Solana or whoever's like the source, the, the tracker, the main, the main source of liquidity. But I think for our example, it'd be like mainnet and then um, SVMs are mimicking that interaction. So they, they're not actually performing changes on their own network. They are um, copying what is this, the state of Solana, the state as it is landed on Solana and relates to their SVM chain. But I have not personally been like getting diving really deep into this problem set. So I'm, I'm encouraged other folks. This is a very focused, difficult challenge. And I love, I highly encourage like a team to really get after it. And if you take the lead, then I think I said Zuma and ABK Labs we really want to proliferate um, someone else's solution into like the SVM kits is um, is my is my stance and thoughts after hearing everyone's convo. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, well said on the open source front, and um, I think it's a good a uh, good point to bring up like the the user perspective, whether it's like an individual using an application on your chain or um, a developer, which I think is who we're largely building the interop for, right, is the de de development community. Um, uh, but I do want to give some time. We still have like five minutes here. Other people, thoughts, things you want to add? One thing I would like to add is uh, whenever we are working together, let's just make sure to not make the same mistakes that the EVM folks made when they created L2s and L3s and all of it, wherein uh, the wallet doesn't support all of these chains and you have to, for just to use an SVM, you have to add multiple RPCs and just to figure out which wallet supports which layer. There's a base requirement or something, we should have some 
not the standard per se, so standard is a cursed word, but in some way we should have discoverability of uh, the uh, L2s or rollups natively built into wallet. So the user doesn't have to go to the fiction of switching networks and all of it, right? It's just by default, there is some identification like Vitalik is pushing for a chain ID. Uh, they have an EIP open where you can identify the uh, layer two or rollup just by the way the address is formatted by the chain id it's there right so if that is the base level natively is there then that will make the user experience very good for the future users Um, anybody else here where we got five minutes left? All right. Well, I think, um, in that case, oh, go ahead. Yep. Hey guys. Uh, good to meet you all. I'm Sven, uh, one of the co-founders at Light Protocol. And I just want to say, so um, we're building, uh, you know, we've been building this space, ZK, building ZK infrastructure on Solana. And I love to uh, see so many people uh, come together and, you know, work out, uh, you know, all these solutions to to interrupt questions um, that, and, you know, trying to anticipate problems that come up as sort of like the SVM exports itself, I guess, into, into crypto. And, just want to say, so like, if anyone wants to like discuss using ZK, um, you know, we, we we're open source. Uh, let me let me send in my um, let me send in the. So this is the uh, lead protocol repo. We do have a bunch of primitives that I think can be really useful to anyone thinking about building with interop and ZK verifiability on Solana. Um, Super, super excited to keep up with the uh, space of welding. So, and uh, thank you for joining us. I, I had one question regarding light protocol, right? Can we use uh, state compression and whatever you guys are building at light protocol to compress um, whatever you, we are pushing to the L1 to try and limit all the possible bloat that we might be pushing, even though we are doing most of the work on the uh, SEM side, but when we are pushing all the transaction data and the blobs and whatever, right? Uh, what is the best way to go about it according to you? Um, so I'm not um, fully familiar with uh, what you're building in detail, um, but I'll try to give sort of like a high level of what you can do with uh, ZK compression. Um, it's essentially a um, L1, bridge contract to Merkleized state. So you have the CK friendly Merkle tree structures on the L1, um, and you can store state commitments in these Merkle trees on the L1, right? Um, we use it sort of, the, you know, our core focus at the core protocol level is to just uh, reduce data storage costs for existing applications and smart contracts on Solana, because essentially what it allows you to do, right, these state commitments, um, that you can then run like very efficient ZK proofs over uh, and send them with your transactions. Um, what they allow you to do is uh, you can store data outside your on-chain account space. By default, we just dump it onto the Solana ledger, supposed to something like call data or blobs on Ethereum, um, which gets these like crazy cost saving multiples. Um, but you can put your data anywhere. We just care about the commitment itself. Um, so, uh, you can use that to sort of verifiably commit to to your underlying data. You can also, you know, post and publish all your data on chain. I think, I think, you know, I, I have some opinions on um, uh, interoperability, and I think that you you will hit some hard limits uh, anywhere. You know, if you want to have a like solid root of trust, um, you'll probably always want to wait for finality on the on the L one which also means that uh, you might want to, um, you know, and then if you if you want to have sort of an SBL, SVM bridge, um, you also need to publish data. So you're like fundamentally constrained in, um, in these like data availability constraints, et cetera, um, with the batch sizes you can do. But I think there's a lot of like, um, 
interesting things you can do, right? Like fundamentally, you can commit to state with ZK compression. You can run your client side smart contract, which could be like a roll up ZK coprocessor, or uh, anything really that is verifiable uh, via ZK, and then interact with other apps and, and um, potentially roll up so through the L1 bridge contract. Yeah, just to add on, when you're using a rollup, like if it's a ZK rollup, you're already doing ZK compression to an extent, which is what people said when ZK compression came out that it's basically a rollup. I don't, I don't agree with that, but then their point was that when you're posting a proof via rollup, via from a rollup on Solana, that is already compressing the rollup data, rollup transactions in the, in the form of a ZK proof. So if you're posting, if, if you're a ZK rollup, there is no explicit need of a um, of, of, of ZK compression. But then, if probably if you're an optimistic rollup, you need all of the transactions on chain. So maybe there you need um, some sort of compression. Awesome guys. Um, we're at the top of the hour here and everybody has busy lives and schedules out there building your companies and your protocols and technologies and whatnot. So I think we can wrap here. Um, I will be posting the, uh, Firefly AI summary for everybody to read. We'll probably put that in notion, um, so that everybody can have access to that. Uh, Kyle, I'll just slack it to you or whatever. And, um, I'll also, likely just upload this conversation to my youtube channel um the index podcast youtube channel and then i can just point to there and i'll just drop the link in the um svm community chat so everybody who couldn't make it can review um and then I, I i would suggest that you know we come up with like a regular cadence for this call so we can keep these conversations going if everybody thinks it's valuable um we can take the conversation of like how often to do it i'm game to talk whenever um uh, but uh, look, we can take that conversation to the chat and just see what the community thinks. I think I think we'll like interoperability is just one topic too that needs to be discussed. There's a couple other things that are 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 pretty um, prevalent that would be worth sharing out on. Um, so happy to do this as regularly as needed so we can keep pushing forward. Um, again, thanks everybody for being here. Really happy that everybody showed up, and um, we'll see you see you on Telegram and on Twitter. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, all. Thank you very much, Alex. Bye. No problem.